there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to paint a fall cornucopia, and I don't have a reference photo from you. Um, I could not find a decent one that was copyright free, and I figured, you know what, I know how to draw all these things, I'm just gonna make one up. And uh, because some of you guys said you had a hard time seeing my drawing, I decided I would do a drawing with, um, with a dry erase marker. And that way it would be a little bit easier because it would be black and white and you'd be able to see. Sorry about the glare. Um, maybe I can adjust it a little bit. Oh, uh, yeah, maybe. Let me get something to put under my under my thing to adjust that. Hopefully there. Now there's no glare, so hopefully that's helpful. And we're going to start off by putting in our cornucopia. And if you want to sketch this on, um, on scrap paper... You can get the horn for the cornucopia, and I've just put like half a circle there because um, I don't want to have to erase a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to put a pumpkin in here. That's going to take up a lot of space. We'll put a nice fat pumpkin right there. Give him a stem, and I want to give him a curly stem. So it's kind of like a Cinderella pumpkin. And then I would go in and I would erase the double lines obviously you can do that with a pencil eraser and I'm not going to put a ton of detail on anything here because I want to be able to change my mind when I'm painting if I decide I want to do something different I'm going to put in an apple do like a do like a little bumps on the bottom have it like a red delicious apple I'm just going to give it a stem. You could give it a, um, you could give it a leaf if you wanted to. I'm going to do a little pear on its side, kind of tipped over. I'm just basically looking at my sketch and drawing from that, just so we'll have about the same thing. I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do a little braid around the edge of my cornucopia. So I'm just going to put a dotted line in there to kind of show my thickness. And I'm going to start, uh, not really a braid, it's actually just going to be a twist because that will be a little bit easier to do. So we're just going to put these um, rounded diagonal rectangles kind of. Let me know in the comments below if this is helpful. If you had a hard time seeing the other drawings and this is helpful, let me know. If it's not helpful, then I won't do it again. But if it is, then this might be a good way to uh, to do the drawing part. And I'm just doing like little kind of circles over here because it's foreshortened. You're only going to see the front half of it. And there's the braid. I'm not going to do anything with the wicker texture on the cornucopia in the drawing. We can deal with that when we go to paint it. Now I'm going to do a bunch of grapes. I'm going to overlap the pumpkin a little bit because I like to have these edges uh, covering each other up. It helps unify everything. You can have it overlap the pear a little bit. Just circles. I won't be too fussy with it. And I want to have I want to have some vines coming out of there because that's a grape. A grape stem. I'm going to put some piece of fruit back there. I'm not sure what color I'll do. As I'm doing it, I'll just, I might make it a pear, I might make it an apple, I might make it an orange. It just depends on what I feel like the picture needs at that point. I'm going to put a maple leaf over here. I'm going to tuck it in behind the apple, I think. I'm going to do a gourd on its edge over here. I kind of want to cover, I want to overlap the edge of the cornucopia a little bit. One of those gourds that are like double colored. The stem in there. Uh, I'm going to do another maple leaf over here. You can find references for all of these individual items if you want to. I'll do a small maple leaf up here. Like I went and got some, I had some maple leaves out of my backyard uh, because I was like, ah, I'm going to want a little something to go by. You can also do grape leaves if you want. We're going to do another maple leaf here. Just being real loose with my sketch. 
And I want to do a couple of stalks of wheat, which I actually had a had a stalk of wheat in my backyard. Um, they must have been from the wheat berries that we sometimes plant wheat berries um, for to make that like grass that the cats like to eat. And I would do three and I would have one kind of taller and have the other two a little bit shorter for just to make a pleasing arrangement. And you can you can arrange it however you feel like you need to fill in your um, your arrangement. And you know you could put vines and stuff in. I would wait to do vines until you are all done your painting, so that way you can kind of put them in where you need them. So uh, kind of fix your drawing, make it the way you want to. And then um, get your get it drawn onto your watercolor paper or traced onto your watercolor paper, and then we will start painting. I thought it would be fun to try something new today, and I just received these paints from Mikador, and that is a company out of Australia. And these are the Mikador watercolors, which they may look familiar to the Kolinor student watercolors, which are on the black have the black backgrounds. Um, the companies are affiliated somehow. Um, I think it's just student grade versus artist grade and I thought it'd be really fun to use their season set because they have an autumn and a winter. And they also sent me some brushes which are synthetic but they have um, little kind of like holes in the fibers or like pox. Holy crap I just touched that and there's already paint. Um, they have these fibers or holes in the fiber of the brush that helps the paint release or helps it hold paint so that you can carry it over to your painting. So I just wanted to put a little water on there to get them activated. And what I'm going to do is actually wet the back of this paper. And we're going to do the, the method where we wet the back of the paper and grab my spray bottle for that. And then um, we'll paint on the front side of the paper. It just kind of helps everything stay wet long enough. Now the paper I'm using is also from them. It's the Rains paper, the Roy Mac Rains, and these are the Roy Mac watercolor brushes. Um, so it's, this is all new stuff I've never used before and I'm working without a reference photo, so this ought to be interesting. So here goes nothing guys. Hope this works out well because it's Wednesday morning and this video is going to go up on Wednesday evening. Alright, so I think what I'm going to do is start, I'm just going to wet the whole thing and we'll get some color in here where this is going to be a pretty loose picture. I'm really curious, I might just use the autumn seasoned watercolors, but I wanted to have the option of some other blues, so I did get the winter colors as well out, and they also have spring and summer, but I just grabbed the, um, the autumn and winter, so you can kind of see those colors there. We'll see how they do. All right, the paper is uniformly wet. And I think for the background, I would like to do some blues. So I'm going to start off with a blue that's in the autumn set, which is kind of like a sagey, sagey green color. Oh, that's pretty, isn't it? That's really nice. That'll be a nice uh, base. Now, when you wet the back of your paper, you can kind of guide around wh uh, where you want your paint to go, which means it's not going to, it's not going to bleed too much into areas you don't want it to. This is really wet though. My brush is wet. This is a really absorbent brush. It does hold a lot of water and paint. So I'm pretty pleased with this. Um, it's a little bit springier than the typical... Taclon brush, or is tip, the typical synthetic qu quill, which would be a uh, synthetic fiber, but it'd be really soft or really floppy. This has a little bit of um, uh, more snap to it, but it does hold tons of water. This is probably more to mimic a Kalinsky versus a squirrel. Now I want to have some other colors in here. I think I will go into the winter collection. Let's see what we have. Let's see what that one looks like. That looks like a Prussian blue. Maybe I'll flick a little bit of that on there. Oh, I've got all these memory cards just sitting right out of my desk. Let's move those so we don't have some terrible surprises when we go to use them. Okay, and 
I should have swatched these colors out actually. I'm just going to move my palette a little bit and see what, oh that's pretty. I want some of that in there. I like to integrate a lot of colors in the background. I'm going to go ahead and put that right in the grape area. I'm going to get a towel because I feel like I need to actually remove some water from this brush because it's so absorbent. Um, because I like that color. That would be, I like to get these colors going in the background as much as I can. That's not the color I went for. That's all right. We can blot it up. It's watercolor. No big deal. That is a strong color though. So what was the one I was going for? This one right here. We'll just add that right in there. Yeah, these brushes are really nice. So this is kind of just a blocking method. But even though like it's almost puddly sopping wet, it's not um, it's not going crazy on me because of the wetting the back of the paper. So I think that's a great technique if you want a little more control, but you want to work wet into wet. Uh, because I know that's that's really something a lot of beginners struggle with because it's so um, it can be so difficult difficult to control. Now if I take some of that color and mix it in with these greeny blues, that green kind of negates the the uh, purpley color, and we get this get a nice shadow color in there. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag some of that in. And I can actually blot it a little bit there. Okay. I am going to see what other colors I have here. Let's see, that yellow, that gold is really bright. Oops. And I got into some of the brown there. Mix it up with some red. And let's get some colors in on the pumpkin. Now for this, I'm going to just put in the rib lines of the pumpkin. Get that, uh, get that squared away. And now I'm going to grab some of the yellow and a blot though. So I'm staying with this large quill. This is size on there. This is the number four quill. I think it's the smallest quill they have. I got one that's bigger than this. It's honking, big honking quill. I'll need to use that on a big, <coughs> big painting. Um, what color is this? Was that the brown? That seems to be another shade of gold. A little bit of that in there. Let's get a little of the red with that gold. I think that would be real pretty. Now remember, watercolors do shift lighter. So I'm not going to worry about uh, this being too bright at this stage because we'll go in after it's all dry and we'll put in details. I'm not going to worry about it being too vibrant because remember it's always easier to make a color duller than it is to make it brighter. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of blot a little bit the edge of this pear. I don't think it's really... Oh yeah, it's not bleeding any further. It's fine where it is. Okay, I think I want to try a different brush. These brushes are fun. Let's try, let's try this. Is this a three quarter inch flat? That's a real handy one. A three quarter inch or one inch and a half inch. Those are good sizes to have because there's so many different times you're going to use them. I'm going to grab this brown. Yeah, I can't believe I didn't. Can you believe I didn't swatch these? I'm just like, I'm so excited to use these. I'm just all willy-nilly today. I will link up, uh, this isn't a sponsored video, I'm just doing this for fun. I will link up to that website where these came from though. This will be really handy if you're in Australia and you're having a hard time finding supplies. Um, I know that it can be very challenging to find any supplies that are an affordable price, so definitely want to have a look. They also have a lot of good stuff for kids, so if you're going to make an order, and you wanted to save on shipping and get a bunch of stuff at once, you could maybe think about your Christmas list, stuff you might be getting your kids, your grandkids. I always, um, 
I always have a list going whenever I'm getting ready to order so that way I can get the best deals, you know, when I'm shopping online and then I don't have to, you know, constantly be, you know, ordering something or waiting for something to arrive. I grab some of this golden color. I think that would be pretty to do in the basket as well, like towards the top. That's really bright. What was the other yellow? This one right here. What's that one look like? That one's almost like a, um, uh, it's almost like an azo yellow or a quin gold. That is very bright. It's a good mixing color. Now I think something I want to do at this stage because uh, because the paper's so wet and I, I want that wicker texture is I'm just going to grab a pen, like a dip pen. I've got one right here. Yeah. And what I'm going to do is scratch in the wicker texture. So I'm just going like that. See how I'm curving my line though? Hopefully my hand's not in the way, but you can see the way my hand, my arm's moving. And another tip is, when you're drawing, if you can draw from your shoulder, that means you're moving your whole arm, you're gonna get a much more fluid, natural, natural stroke. And see, I can do this and then do another row. So I don't have to do it all in one, all in one go. And I can just kind of flick in little, um, you know how baskets, they have like the weave, the wicker's like woven. So I'm just flicking in those little ribs that the wicker would have been woven around. I'm not going to be like, this is not like a, a realistic piece. I'm just getting the colors in there. Now, since I want some darker color, the best thing to do is go with a smaller brush because you're not going to pick up so much water. So I can go in here with a smaller brush. I might even grab a little bit of that wine color with the brown. Oh gosh, that makes a nice like burnt umber color. And I am, you know, keeping it real limited, but there is, there are more colors. There's a 36 color set that I've also, that I've also received. I'm just, I just was thinking, well, you know, I want to do something that's fallish. Last week's fall bouquet looked a little summery. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, summer's my favorite season. So last week's fall, fall, those are air quotes, by the way. <laughs> bouquet looked a little, a little summery. Um, I like summer. I like these brushes. It's just weird getting used to how much water to use because it holds so much. Man, these colors mix really nicely. Now they they don't look super glossy in the in the package, so I was kind of wondering like how like how strong are they gonna be? Are they gonna be difficult to rewet? Are they gonna be chalky looking? But I think they're gonna be fine. Of course we'll see when it's all dry. And this isn't the official review. What I like to do when I'm uh, reviewing a product is I actually use it a few times. I do a couple paintings with it. Um, since I make cards, I usually will try a, a card making application too because I know that um, most of you guys do more than one thing. You you paint and you also make cards, or you scrapbook. You you know you you get more bang for your buck when you are buying a supply. You want to make sure it's going to be you're going to be able to use it for different things. Which I think is really, uh, really wise. So I like to try to use my stuff for a few things before I, you know, before I really comment about how I like it or not, because I don't know until I've used it a couple times. I could be using something and be having a bad day, and that's not the fault of the product that I'm using. Oh, I like, I like the gradation of color there. I like how it's picking up in the scratches that I made. I think I want a few more scratches though, because I feel like in here I don't have enough going on. And this is just such a nice technique because it's really subtle, and, but you don't lose it. You go over if you go over it and you add more um, paint. The paint seeps into those nooks and crannies, and you get, you know, it it will level up as you add more paint. Okay, I'm happy with that. I like that. It's pretty cool. Okay, something I will also do as I'm working is I will look for puddles. Um, and the paper's not puddling, it's keeping a very even tension, that's really good. I do have to worry about the, uh, worry's a strong word, I don't worry, I don't worry when I'm painting, I have enough things to worry about, I don't need to worry when I'm painting. Um, oh, I saw this great quote, and it was, and it was, uh, life is made in the mistakes, and I thought, that that's awesome, because I always think, like, in art, if you make a mistake, well, that's awesome, because you just learn something new. You know, if you never make a mistake, you're never going to know how you got there, you're never going to know how you got that thing that you got, how it happened. 
Um, I'm going to add a smidge of that blue to negate the orange. Look how nice and dark that is. Oh, that's good. Look at that. Not chalky. Very, very nice. Then I go inside here to the inside of my cornucopia and add some shadow. And by the way, this is what we call the hot mess stage. This is where everything is mushy and everything is messy. And that's okay. We're unifying everything. We're getting all these colors in now so that when we go and we add our detail, it's going to all match. It's all going to work. It's going to be fine. Let's see. I got to remember what a gourd looks like. I love gourds. I paint them every year. I decorate with them every year. It's so, um, it's funny how like, how you can remember something if you've painted it really well. Um, but if you, you know, if you don't paint something, you just kind of take it for granted. So I've painted gourds several times, so I'm hoping I can remember how they look. I was volunteering at the school with some kids. They were, they, the whole eighth grade class was going to be uh, writing and illustrating books. And, um, it was so, it was so fun. Um, and sometimes, you know, not in this, this case, but oftentimes you'll be like working with kids and they'll be working on their books and they'll ask, how do I draw this? How do I draw that? And you'll kind of spur of the moment you will be, um, you'll be making up, you know, um, pictures for them or showing them step by step. And it's amazing what you remember, you know, if you like break it down, like, okay, I know that these gourds were half yellow and half green. And so you paint that down and, um, it's just, it's just funny how much you can rely on your memory. And a lot of times we like, for me, a lot of times I just like, I'm not going to get a reference photo. I'm not going to try to remember that, but, um, it's amazing how much we have locked away, locked away in the old brain pan. I'm going to do a little shadow with a little bit of orangey color. Just added that red. This is almost like, oh, you know what guys, this reminds me of ink tents. It's so, um, they're so vibrant. It's very inky. Okay. Clean my brush. Gonna grab. I'm gonna need to look at these greens here. What's this one look like? Oh, that'll work. That's pretty. That must be like a sap green. Let's see what it's called. It's called sap green. Well, look at that. I know my sap green. Is that pretty? Oh, it's very inky. If you're looking for like a, an inky watercolor, I think this one would uh, suit you just fine. Now be careful on this stage, even though your colors aren't going to run crazy because you have both sides of the paper wet, they're still going to feather. So you're going to want to keep that in mind um, because the edges, you might end up with a bigger fruit than you started with because of the way, see how it's kind of, um, I don't know if you can see that or not, uh, around the edge there, we've got a little feathered line and that's fine. But don't like try. Don't think. Oh, well, I'm just gonna make it smoother. I'm gonna go out more. So don't do that, okay? Because when we go and we put our sh uh, shading in and whatnot, we'll fix that at that point. So don't try to fix it now, or you're just gonna make a humongous, um, a, a humongous gourd. And I like to put a few little speckles in there. Maybe a little bit of this green up here near the stem. I can add that to the shadow area, but I'm not gonna go beyond the shadow. I'm not gonna go beyond what's there. Okay, I'm not going to put the stems in. I'm not going to put any vines in. I'm not going to do the wheat yet because I'm going to want to do that when it's dry. I probably shouldn't have painted so close to the wheat. Hopefully, um, I can go over it just fine. And let's see, our pear. I think I'll do that, maybe like a brownish yellow. Let's try this color. I think that'll be pretty good for a pear. Maybe add some red into it. Oh, I should have grabbed those pears. I have them on my windowsill. I've got a couple tiny Asian pear. Were they Asian pears? I can't remember. But they had their like reddish and gold. They're really pretty. That's a weird shape. I think that I need to make some of that grapes because or pumpkin. I think I've got my pear shape off. Take a little bit of that red. I've got to, I've got to do something, add something to the pumpkin to fix that, because that's not right. i got to reform my pair. Send that pair to reform school. 
Get a little red in there. Something tells me this is going to take me way longer than I anticipated, but we've got a lot of things going on here. And you can paint it in a couple steps. You don't have to do it all in one go. I'm going to take some of this brown, this really dark brown I used for the inside of the cornucopia over here just to do a nice deep shadow because... This, this, uh, on this paper, this cotton paper, the pigments are really locking in. And I do notice you have that tendency a little bit more with, um, did a pumpkin go down that far? Hmm. I'm not sure. You, I notice that happens when you do the wet the back of the paper technique as well. So just something to be aware of. And I think I'll use this little flat brush and do the braid area. Let's do some brown and some yellow ochre color. Oh, actually I don't need to add as much water as I think I do because the paper is wet so I'm not going to get any drag. I might use some pastels or colored pencils or something if I need to brighten up areas where the paint is really settling in. I'm not really going to worry about that so much. I'm thinking I might make this leaf have some brown in it because I've got a bunch of brown over here and I want to kind of cross pollinate it a bit. So I think I'll add some over here. As your paper starts to dry, you're going to notice that your lines will be a little crisper. This is kind of liberating not going from a reference photo. Actually, I must say. I'm going to add some kind of orangey color to it. Switch to a smaller round. Blot my brush. Add some sap green. These are really interesting. They don't remind me of any of my other watercolors. I'm glad because I like new things. I like to try something that's different. I like to add something to my uh, to my collection that is a little different. I'm gonna do a little bit of the red over here. A little of that brown. A little brown in here. I think it might be a challenge to get a smooth wash just because the color seems to grab the paper but I think that's also because I am working the back of the paper wet as well. I'm going to do a couple, I got, got a couple leaves up there. I think I'm going to do that one with the sap green because that's such a pretty color. This could be a leaf that has not really changed much yet. I keep getting too much water from that sap green. That sap green is so strong. But I don't want it to bleed all over the all over the place. Oh my goodness, kitty cat. <laughs> Tally. You hear her? She says, hey, what's going on? What's going on? She will be in the middle of this painting. I don't want to call to her because she'll come over and she'll want to drink my water, my paint water, and she'll want to sit on top of my painting and it will be covered in black cat hair. <laughs> I think I left the cellar door open so she can go outside. Oh, and what you can, another thing you can do, you can grab your, uh, now look at my leaf though. You can grab your pen or credit card scraper or end of your brush, whatever you have. 
and you can add some scrapey lines in here. And that just means less work for you to do later. But just keep in mind though, this is kind of like a uh, permanent solution because um, those lines are always going to be embedded in your paper. You might be able to cover over it with like a uh, a different type of paint, but if, you, if you're not sure if you like that or not, I wouldn't do it. I'm going to go in with the red. And we'll do this this leaf with some red. Man, it's like it's like painting with a bottle of ink. Got a bead of water on my brush. I want to block that off before it drips down and makes a mess. So when I'm doing these serrated edges, if I start at the tip of one of the serrated edges and I Oh, look at that. A little dry slice of paper there I didn't wet. Oh, that's funny. It almost felt like I was going over a resist. Oh, that's weird. I didn't wet that little slice. That's funny. Um, I totally lost my train of thought. Okay, got this stem. I'm going to go around the stem. Just a little bit of water. So if you're going on the wet paper you don't need that much water because your paint, your paper is going to glide. I will be letting this dry once I've got everything blocked in. And that's a great time to take a break. It's a great time to go for your lunch, go have a cup of tea. You can speed it up with a hair dryer. That won't hurt anything with this paper because we don't, uh, with this painting because we don't have any salt or anything that we need. Um, we need to let it dry naturally for, like if we were using salt or granulation medium or something like that where we need nature just to work its course. So you can also do that. But it's also nice just to give your eyes a break. There. Oh, and another thing we can do is some, like if you look at this leaf, it's got some black dots. I wouldn't do them too close to the edge, but you could do some. Some in the middle if you want. If you don't want it that realistic or you don't want the black dots because you don't like the way they look, you don't have to do them, but I figured what the heck, they're there. I'm gonna do them. And get my little lines, some of my lines in. You don't have to press hard, at least you shouldn't have to. And if the whole paper's wet, just carefully you don't go beyond the area where you just painted or you're going to have scratches where you don't want them. So here I think that one would be a good one to do red as well. I'm going to use a bigger brush because um, I don't need to use I can cover up a lot more area. It's all open. I'm going to shave my rinse water real quick. Look at that. It's very, very dark. There's no chocolate milk happening, so these aren't chalky watercolors, which is really nice. I'd never heard of this brand before. The company reached out to me. I'd heard of Colinor because I have some of their, their products, their pencils. really interesting to see what supplies are available around the world. It's so fun to find a treasure, you know? And it's fun to try something new. I'm going to do this apple over here with that same red. But I think I might add just like a, a little bit of green on there. I don't think that the, I don't know if you could probably hear it, but the water pump is going, but it, I didn't think it was that loud, so I apologize if that, if you're listening with headphones, you're like, what is that noise? What is that hum? That's our water pump. I think the laundry is going upstairs. I think I'll 
do a little bit of green there. I may have to bridge it in with some yellow. I probably should have done the yellow first because it's lighter, but let's just see how it goes. I'm liking these brushes. I hope they must ship to the United States because they ship these to me. Ooh, I like that. I'm surprised I could meld those colors in together. Hmm. I like it. And we'll do a little bit of green here at the top. Probably will want to go in with some like pastels or colored pencils or pastel pencils or something. Mm, I like that. Oh, you know it'd be pretty. We can add a little green onto this guy too. See, that's the thing when you're doing the wet on wet and the background's wet and the foreground's wet, you've got like so many more options as far as um, grabbing a little brown here. Uh, you got so many options as far as like going back in and adjusting a color without getting hard edges. And uh, I think it's kind of cool. All right, so I think I'm going to do that fruit green. Maybe a little more green on this one because I feel like it didn't. It feels a little harsh. I think I'll do that fruit green because I don't have a lot of green going in there. So I'm going to go right to that sap green. This could be a Granny Smith apple. Could be an unripe pear, which is how I like my pears. I like my pears green. And I think I'll do a yellow fruit back there, which could be a ripe pear. Or it could be a golden delicious apple. Insert your favorite yellow fruit. Think of like pears and apples and stuff like that for like, I don't know, cornucopias. This all reminds me of like New England and, you know, fall and the type of things that come into season this time of year. And let's take, I want to do the stem. I think I'm going to do the stem in some gold. Some goldish yellow, maybe put a little bit of brown in it. I don't really want a lot of brown. Just a little brown to make it a little bit more ochre color. Hmm, this brush feels good. Uh, and I'm just gonna curly cue it. I went to Pier 1 with my sister last week and they had those glass pumpkins that have the curly Q twisty stem that are so pretty. And that's what inspired that. That little curly Q. I don't think I've ever seen a real pumpkin with that much of a curly Q on it. I am gonna go with that same color and do these wheat. Sorry if my hand's in the way. I really can't move this because it's it's all sopping wet and stuck down to my mat. Yeah, that's gonna be fine. I was worried about the blue and purple and stuff, but I think that's gonna be fine. I'm gonna need a little more color though, a little more of that gold, a little more of that brown. If we go in and use a little chalk afterwards, it's not gonna be the end of the world, guys. Boy, this thing comes with a razor sharp point. I would love to turn this around. If this was on a, a block, I would totally turn this around so I could get a better reach for that. Ah, yep. Get a little bit of color in there. And this finishes up layer one. And we just need to let that dry. Put it brown in sky too. Okay, I'm going to let this dry and then when we come back we'll add our details. So what we have now is underpainting. The detail work won't really take that long I don't think. So have a break and we'll see you back in a few minutes. Okay, this has dried. I did use my heat tool to speed it along a little bit and I also swatched out those two palettes while I was at it because uh, that was kind of ridiculous that I hadn't swatched out brand new watercolors, but I was just excited. Um, I'm just going to start by putting in a few details, and I'm going to mix the um, that purpley color that I had used 
and and actually when you're looking at watercolors you could tell they're going to be transparent if they look almost black because that means there's no white in there that's helping to show the the uh, pigments so it's always a good idea to swatch them if they look really bright and almost candy colored in the palette then they probably have a lot of white in them and those types of paints tend to be a little chalky when you go to uh, when you go to paint with them and i'm mixing in that color that looks like a prussian blue and i'm going to use this for the shadows on the purple i'm using a number four round you can use whatever brush you're comfortable with and i'm not mixing a ton up because uh something i noticed when I was doing the background, when we were doing our first layer, is that the paint went quite a ways, so I don't want to have a bunch of, like, uh, I don't want to mix up more than I'm going to use. So I'll have to clean up this palette. And the palette that I'm using, the silicone matte here, this is the Waffle Flower Medium Matte. And I'm adding some water here. Lighten it up a bit. It won't, uh, you don't really see, even though I'm adding water, it still looks pretty dark because it's wet. It will look lighter once it dries on the areas where I added the water. Now I'm cleaning my brush off. I'm going to go in with a bigger brush and just kind of add... Some water here and there. I think I want a little bit of red in the grape, so I'm grabbing just some of the red from the autumn palette. It's kind of like a scarlet color, and I'm going to mix some of that purple into it. So it's going to be kind of like um, kind of like a rusty wine color. Because the paper's dry, I should, well, well the, except for where I just dabbed on some water, I should have some nice crisp edges. And that's what I want at this stage. I want nice crisp edges. I like to have a variety of color in the things that I'm painting. So, by adding a little bit of water here and there, by switching up my pigments, a little bit with each brush stroke, it helps me get that kind of um, a natural looking shadow highlight uh, and a much more natural looking fruit. And feel free to um, make this your own. You can paint it differently if you want to. I just moved my palette off my mat here so I could have a little bit more mixing space. And I'm intending to go in with um, a some colored pencils, maybe a paint pen. There. So nice thing about colored pencils is I can get that waxy texture that a lot of the fruit has. Okay, let's see. What else do I want to add more watercolor to? I think I'll do some more color on the pumpkin. So I'm doing some wa uh, yellow and red from the autumn palette. And just kind of sharpening up a little bit. Can mix a little brown in there too in a minute to get any of the shadows that I want. Now I'm going to be very careful going around the pear and apple because I want to have a nice sharp line there eventually. I can blend some of that out a little bit with some yellow. And actually, there was a, like a burnt umber color in the um, in the winter palette, but I don't want to add that now because I've already used the um, I've already used the other colors. 
I try to keep my colors like once I've gotten that background and I try not to add other shades from that water from the watercolor. Get some shadow in there. I'm going to grab some green, sharpen up the edge of that, using the sap green from the autumn, and I'm going to add a little Prussian blue to that to get a little bit darker. And now this is a time where you would kind of crisp up those edges. You don't want to chase them while the paper's wet or you're just going to end up with, um, you can end up with a bigger and bigger and bigger piece of fruit or gourd or what have you. But I can do some of the sap green on its own. Just a little splash of red over here. I'm just putting in where I want a little bit more of the inky color and then I am going to do the rest with the pencils I think and some of these these pens here which are also from Mikador. Um, yeah, Mikador, Mikador. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it right. I think I am. Oh I think I want to do a little stem with the watercolor there too just because I've got I've got everything else, at least in the base layer, done with the watercolor. And the stem as well. Okay. And I won't, I'll do the stem of that with a colored pencil, but those two that are kind of like right on top of the background, I want to do with the watercolor. Now we're going to let this dry and we'll go in with some colored pencils. Okay, this is dry and we're just going to start adding some detail with colored pencil. And of course you can be as detailed or as loose as you want with it. I'm going to start in with this cream color and I'm going to do highlights on the edge of the cornucopia. And I've kind of lost a lot of my drawing here, so I am going to look back at the sketch that I did on my dry erase board, and I am going to lightly sketch in my highlights here. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with sketching this on something else and then, then uh, tracing it onto your paper. And the benefit of that is if you decide you want to try it in a different medium or in a different style, you don't have to do the drawing all again because you have it on something else. I'm going to do, actually, I think I'll do my highlight kind of in the center here where I had it before. I'm just going to use the edge of my pencil to pick up some of the texture of the paper. It's a really good way to be able to get some of that highlight texture really quickly. And I'm also going to throw a little bit more highlight, very light pressure. The, the paper has got a grit to it, this cold press paper, so it's going to grab some of the media anyway. So I'm just throwing some of this in pretty quickly. What I think I'll do is show you how to do a section of this, and then I will finish the rest, finish the rest of the basket off camera, and then it will be uh, won't, won't be so long for you to watch, but you can get all the information you need. So I'm putting the shadow on the bottom of each of these little sections of the braid. 
And I would just go ahead and do all of it at once. You could do one section at a time, do the highlight, shadow, and midtone, but it just makes more sense for me to do it all at once. You can already see how we're starting to get a little bit more um, depth here. And now I'm going in with this dark color. I can sharpen up around these objects here. A little shadow behind the braid because it's kind of three-dimensional. Shadow behind these objects. And just kind of go with the direction of the weaving on the cornucopia. I can sharpen up the edge here. I don't want to sharpen it too much because this is kind of further back. You wouldn't have as much detail back there. I'm just making sure I keep those pencil marks kind of curvy as I go. And you can you can layer up if you feel like you need more shadow. You know, you can you can add to it. You're not stuck with whatever you've just done. I probably should clean my palette off because I keep setting my hand <laughs> right on top of that. Even though it's dry, if my hand isn't any moisture on it, it picks up the color. Okay. And then you want to grab a mid-tone. By the way, that was uh, that color was sepia. The highlight was cream. And I'm just going to use this color here, sienna brown. And this will be what I put in the middle areas. And this texture, I'm going with a light with a light touch so that I'm going to keep the texture of the paper which will help that cornucopia have that wickery feeling. I'm just going to shade in. Plus we have all that color that we already painted. We don't need to over we don't need to go over the entire thing. You can also add a little bit of yellow ochre. And that would help warm it up a little bit. I'll probably do that or some goldenrod or what is, what is this color here? Uh, oh my gosh, yellow ochre. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, holy cow, it's hard to read those, uh, those gold stamped labels. Okay, I'm going to go in with some of this. And add my mid my mid highlight so it's before you get to the bright highlights connecting the sienna brown and the cream and just try to keep your coloring lines with that that kind of um, roundish with that kind of a uh, you know curved like the cylindrical cone this is a good color to blend your mid-tone and your highlight together. All right, so I'm going to finish up the basket. Um, over here, I'm just going to you know, bring that color in so I get a little bit of that braid going all the way around. But I'm actually going to clean up my palette, wash my hands so I don't smear anything, and probably just work right on my coloring mat. So we'll see you back in a minute, and our basket will be done. Okay, so I've done a little bit of pencil here and there just to um, make it quick when I demonstrate it for you. And it, you don't have to do that much. That's the thing I really want to stress here is that you don't have to do a lot. Um, you want a lot of the watercolor to show through so that you're not just redoing all the work that you've been doing. So for like the wheat, I am just going to go in with this cream and I'm going to try to keep reusing the same pencils over and over again so that I've got this harmony. And I'm just going to put the kind of highlights in here. Just do like... Um, kind of like V upside down V's or triangles. And then I'll use some of the golden color, yellow ochre, and just put some little lines going in that same direction. And then I'll go in with some brown for some shadows, just little dashes. And that's really all I would do there. So these leaves here, I've already accented with some colored pencil and I'll show you how I did it on these two leaves. So this one's pretty plain. Um, it's a leaf similar to that one. It's pretty much all red, but I do like to get a couple different colors in there. So um, the thing you'll notice is that if the color's a little more orange, oftentimes it's going to be a little more opaque. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of go around the edge with the the uh, the orange or the more opaque color. If it's not showing up, what you can do is grab a color like cream. 
I would do cream over white because white can be a little cool in temperature and just kind of outline it a bit and then you'll go over it with your red and that's going to help you get those edges because oftentimes, um, well, your color pencils are going to be kind of translucent. So if you're trying to go next to something that's dark or go over something that's dark, getting that, uh, getting an opaque color down first will really help. And you'll probably need to sharpen your pencil. I've been going back and forth to the pencil sharpener as I've been working. And I would just throw in a little bit of color here and there and not go overboard because you don't want to have to, if you really detail one area, you're going to have to really detail the other areas. So make sure whatever you're doing to that one area, and that's why it's nice to skip around a bit, you're not going to regret it because you have to do it to a bunch of other areas. Unless you want to spend a lot of time, I would definitely make sure you have some reference material if you want to spend a lot of time there because you're just going to need more, more information to go by. And then just kind of this from your imagination. Now I'm going to grab this uh, nice sharp brown pencil and I am going to put in some veins because it doesn't look like I scratched them in on this one. If I did, I didn't press quite hard enough. I'm just going to get a few in there the main ones, and then I'm just going to shade in some of the spots that I'm seeing just to give it a little bit of realism. And you can use other colors that you don't see. You put in a little bit of green. You will have greens, yellows, and reds on in browns on maple leaves, especially earlier in the season. So it's kind of nice to throw those in there if you like those colors. And your yellows tend to be more opaque, so they will show up on the red a little bit better. I like to get all my colors in and then kind of go back in with some reds to kind of integrate them. And oh, let's do some of this uh, Tuscan red for some shadows. I'm going to do some shadows around the veins. It almost looks black how dark that red is. You can also add a little bit of that color behind this gourd because it may be casting. Sometimes you get some little shadows here and there depending on how many light sources you have around and how the light's getting scattered. And then I'll go in my bright red. At the, it's kind of like a last step and then just kind of blend out some of those colors, just burnish over some of them. I use a variety of pressures so that um, I can smooth out some colors and then I can add, add some textures in. So less pressure equals more texture, more pressure equals more of a, of a smoother blend. If you have arthritis or anything where it causes you pain in the with your wrists to push a lot with the pencils, I would just, just stick to light applications so that you don't end up over detailing one area or over burnishing one area and then realizing that you need to do it in other places because it doesn't look, it doesn't match anymore. I'm just going with the, the cream just to highlight a few areas. You can highlight some of the veins. And that's how I would do the leaf. Same thing with the other leaf here. This one already has a bunch of colors in it, so I don't feel like I have to do that much to it but I do want to kind of sharpen the edges and I would actually go in with a darker green just because I can't get that crisp. It doesn't show up. The, uh, this apple green, I think it's lime peel, um, is not dark enough to really show up against the edge. So I can kind of go in there with that, with that darker one. I can go in with a lighter one in spots. So basically you just want to sharpen up the edges on that and then I would just color a little bit here and there. 
this one I did do the scraping in of the veins so that really helps take a lot of the work away so if you're watching this through before you begin this piece you can see like I forgot to scrape the leaves there and that made I had to do a lot more work to that one this one all I have to do is add shade in a little color here and there and I'm good I don't have to do a lot to that so think of the colored pencils just as an adjustment. You don't have to do a ton. You can do as much or as little as you like. And it can really, uh, it can really just kind of make it pretty. Now red is my favorite color, so I, I'm always trying to sneak reds in here and there. So I'm putting a little bit more red away from the apple, though, because I did want that green next to the apple so that I would have some nice um, some nice complementary contrast. I'm just doing a little of this green over that cream color so it, it pops a little bit. Now anytime you're doing like a one of the fruits, um, again, you don't have to do a ton to it. I'm going to take the cream and add a little bit of um, edging here because I did kind of get a little sloppy there with the pumpkin color so I'm going in just really lightly with the cream to add some opacity. Now watercolor pencil, uh, watercolor paper is going to uh, wear down your pencils a little quicker than like a regular drawing paper so you'll probably find you have to sharpen more often. So I started off firm on that edge and then I lightened up my pressure as I pulled back and that just uh, that helped transition that green into this more yellowy color. A little yellow in here. And now I'm lightening up the yellow pressure. And then I'm gonna grab some red. And then I don't need to cover up everything that I've already done, but I'm just gonna kinda go over the yellow area and blend it with the red. Now something you might notice when you are working with colored pencils over watercolor is that especially if you're coloring firmly anywhere is that you get a little bit of a wax sheen and you can give your whole paper a spray with like a fixative or a matte finishing spray when you're done and that will even out all of the all of the tone and it will kind of dissolve any of that wax bloom. I'm going to use some Tuscan Red here on the bottom to shadow the bottom of the apple. So that way you don't have to worry about having that um, that bloom on there. Another thing I, I've done before is like if you let it sit, sometimes the wax will rise to the top. You can buff it out with a tissue, but you probably still would want to do a fixative spray just because um, just because you'll have like a shiny spot and you might not like that. I did do a little bit of pencil on that pear already, so you know you can put on as much. Or as little as you want like you could give some little streaks of green or cream on the apple if you want because sometimes apples have those like streaks of color that's a, that's totally up to you you can add some red streaks into the into the green area if you want you know those are details that you can add if you want to you can add a blush onto a pear just with the edge of the pencil, do as little or as much as you want. Now over here I do want to just kind of sharpen, I did sharpen it up with the pencil a little bit and I'm just kind of getting some of this in the bottom of the gourd where I know you have a uh, darker color just because I've sketched these gourds so many times this has been like a really interesting experiment for me because I rely probably too heavily on reference photos a lot of the time and this has been fun. This has been fun to really pick my own brain and it's like okay what do those look like? <laughs> it's probably taken me longer because I have to do so much more figuring than I would if I had a photo to look at but um, it, you can really kind of feel good and surprise yourself that it's like, wow, I can actually remember stuff. <laughs> and you can put a little bit of highlight on here if you want. Mm, let's see if the light's getting that there. Kind of coming in like that. I think I would probably have a little bit of a waxy highlight. 
going in through here. I'm using cream because I think white would be too harsh. I started to work on the grapes, but I was afraid that where I was, I have the tendency to go kind of work everything at once. Um, I didn't want to end up doing too much and then not showing you how I did it. So I'm going to come back to those in a minute. I'm going to go over to the pumpkin and I want to also add a little bit of highlights with the cream. I'm going to go to the edge of the pencil and just kind of hit each of those ribs. Just kind of taper it off as you come down because you're getting into the shadow at that point. Maybe just a little bit of a very tiny little highlight up there. I'm going to go in with some of this yellow. This is sunburst yellow. I mean, I know the silver and gold writing is chic, but man, I wish they would just do black or white <laughs> for their lettering because it's hard to read. Hard to read when you get to a certain age. Let me know in the comments below if you have a hard time reading metallic writing on your art supplies. Now even just that I feel like makes it look quite a bit more natural and realistic looking. Now I'm going to do the same thing here with this orange just really lightly on the side. We're still seeing all that watercolor that we put down. That's all underneath. This is just kind of smoothing it out and giving a little bit more of a solid feeling to the pumpkin. And get the bottom there. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. I don't really feel like I want to do too much. If you want to have more orange, you can find like a mid-tone orange and you can just kind of like glaze over it if you want to. You know, I'll leave it up to you. You can have whatever kind of pumpkin you want. You can have a green pumpkin if you want. You can have one of those more gray, green, or um, porcelain pumpkins, porcelain colored pumpkins. That's up to you. For the stem, the stem's going to have a lot of nice texture. I'm going to start in with a nice dark brown. Let's see, that's black. A dark brown right here. And I am going to start flicking up lines right from the the bottom there and a little bit up there I'm going to use that pretty much all the colors I use for the basket my apologies on the furnace it is officially fall in Maine so the furnace is on Do the cream to get our highlights placed. Oh, I just love adding highlights, don't you? But keep with the line of the stem so that you have um, so that you keep that um, uh, so you keep that texture and you keep that flow. Probably won't be a little ochre. in there and just try to think about overlapping and underlapping so that you're like if you're going to do a shadow you know you get that shadow it's on the part that's underlapping you make sure you keep it kind of highlighted on top hope that makes sense now another thing I want to do is actually throw in a few curly cues I'm going to throw a stem on these grapes. And add our brown. So a lot of this is just kind of like going by feel.
adding, you know, just little little bits of flair like that. Um, okay, let's see the grapes. You want to do a little bit more to those. And I would just grab a few colors that uh, seem to work work really well. I've got this uh, dark purple, which I'll use for some of the shadows. And I'm kind of just drawing some of the circles in as I go. I can grab white, and I will use white for a highlight on these because they will have more of a waxy feeling. I would only kind of draw the top uh, edge with the white. That one had a natural highlight on it that I really liked. some of these out. Uh, let's see, this one is dark purple. I have two dark purples. I think I have two dark purples in my hand. No, nope, maybe not. I try not to get too detail-y because, you know, like I said before, if you do it to one area, you have to do it to another. If you want to go in with some black, you can get those really dark areas. If you want any brighter purple or any redder purple, you can go in and add those as well. Okay, now for the shadow underneath, I'm actually going to use black on its edge because I did a little bit of black right in this little area here because the pumpkin, I kind of had it just kind of not really ending anywhere. So I'm just gonna use the edge on my black pencil to add in a little bit of shadow, a little darker next to the objects and then just let it kind of fade out because it's not a really um, intense shadowy scene. We just where the objects make contact with the table, you have the darkest area, and then just kind of fade it out. And you can sharpen up any edges that are a little fuzzy when you do that. Now, if you lose an edge, because a lot of times you'll have um, like light reflecting back onto an object, you can go back into the lighter version or the highlight version of that. Um, fruit or whatever and you can brighten it up like on this apple here I could take I could take cream or I could take this lighter red I might need to use both and I can just very very gently maybe just cream actually trace the bottom edge of that and that will just pop it from that background enough because a lot of times your light will bounce off of the um, off the background and I could bring this shadow up here onto the apple so it defines the pear a little bit more. You can do that behind the leaf. You can do this behind the gourd. So anything you've added, you know, to one part of the picture, you can add elsewhere. Get a little darker shadow in there if I wanted to. But most of that is just is the watercolor showing through. So I, I tend to save the black for the last. Now one last thing that I wanted to try because this actually came with the, uh, from that uh, Mikador company is these aqua painters. I'm just gonna use the white one I think. And let me just, I think I'm just gonna put like a few highlights on the wheat. lines and then I was noticing 
that they've got these kind of like little lines that come off. So I think I want to throw in some of those. And that's not something that I would have noticed the detail of if I didn't have one. There's no way I would have remembered that from like seeing wheat. But since I got that right there and I can see it, I'm gonna go ahead and add that in. And it's not gonna be super noticeable because I don't know how I don't I don't think the background's dark enough for that to be really noticeable. on the wicker basket, on the cornucopia. You'd really think there'd be more photos of cornucopias out there to, to choose from. Couldn't find any of my, well, I could find some, but none that I really liked on my uh, reference photo sites that I use. So I like to add a little color, then blend it with my finger. And having the wax under there from the colored pencils keeps you from keeps it from getting too uh, too bold, I think. Thing you any place you think you need that just a little smidgen of a uh, highlight you can add it I think that that just about does it. I'm just looking at the all over composition for for any other highlights that I might want to add. And that pretty much does it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you give it a try. Take breaks. Uh, as you're working so you don't get overwhelmed or burnt out or um, tired out and you know give it a try or paint something from your own imagination because it's a lot of fun and you'll be surprised at how much you can actually recall when you do this sort of exercise. Please give me a thumbs up before you go if you enjoyed this. Until next time, happy creating!